Hey guys, what's going on? Troy at Mountain Man Treasure here, and I've got news for you. The federal government wants eBay to tell your buyers where you live. We're going to talk about that coming up. Martin Man. Martin Man. Treasures. Welcome into the channel, guys. My name is Troy. I'm a reseller in Montana. I go to garage sales and estate sales. I go to thrift stores. I buy stuff. And then I sell it on eBay, like so many of you. And uh, there's something that uh, was making headlines. Uh, it feels like it was about two years ago, quite honestly. It was some time ago. Uh, it was about some legislation that was in the works. Uh, I actually contacted both of my uh, congressmen and uh, told them, I'm concerned about this. There are some drawbacks that I don't think you guys are recognizing. And I got the standard politician reply, right? Well, eBay just sent me an email this morning that said, guess what? All of that is going to be happening. But there's good news. There are a couple of ways or a couple of reasons that you can essentially opt out of eBay telling your customer your street address. I, I was going to, honestly, guys, do a garage sale video today, and we were going to push back on what sold. But uh, this information came up, and I thought, you know what? It's valuable. It's worth talking about, but it's not going to make a super long video. So we are going to slip in a couple of days of things that I sold, uh, some, some neat things moving down the mountain. Let's take a look at those, and then we'll come back and talk about the Inform Consumers Act. Here's our next batch of stuff going out. Some cool things in here, nothing real high dollar. This is a vintage G.I. Joe. It's the Cobra Claw, but missing, I mean, it's yellowed. Look at what it's supposed to be, the color right there, and then right here. I mean, it's, it's super yellowed. You can get that stuff off. Uh, I, sometimes, you know, if you want to spend the time to restore it, but uh, for this, it's it's not complete at all. Uh, you know, we're we're missing a piece up here. We're missing one of the missiles. Uh, miss, I, there's a lot missing off of this. Several stickers missing. So, I, I sold it as incomplete. This is more than likely going to end up being a donor piece. Somebody wants various pieces off of here to complete theirs, and it sold. For $15.79 plus shipping. And that's not the only G.I. Joe that we've got here. Here we've got stickers. This came off of the Air Skiff is what these go to. And uh, unused. An unused sticker sheet. And so I, I didn't see another one out there. I posted it and got an offer. Figured, yeah, let's take it. I think I had it up at about $15 because I just had to guess. But I got an offer for $10. And I decided to take that. I mean, 10 bucks, all profit for a little sticker sheet. We'll do that. This I've sold at least once before. I feel like maybe twice before. This is a pretty popular one. It's uh, it's Schleich is the brand name. You guys have seen me sell that before if, uh, if you watch the channel at all. There it is right there. It's Schleich. And there is a collector base for Schleich figures. Not only horses. There are other things. But horses are one of the things you're going to find more often. And people love the Clydesdales. Uh, I imagine Budweiser had a little bit to do with that popularizing the, uh, the old Clydesdale. And this, like I said, uh, repeated sales on this guy if you can find him. He's actually headed to Canada. Uh, 4509 Canadian. I haven't done the conversion, but pretty solid for just a little figure. You can often find these at garage sales in bins for free sometimes, or, you know, like a quarter or something. I always pick them up. They more often than not tend to be long tail, but I have a bin of just horses, just a small little bin of Schleich horses. And so it's easy to pull them out, easy to store away. I don't mind that they take a while when you turn a quarter into 15 bucks or so. It, not bad at all. Pocket knife. Uh, pocket knives do sell very well on eBay. This one actually had some damage. Uh, you know, it had some rust on the blades and stuff, but still a desirable enough knife that it was worth posting. And I put it up there for $8.98 plus shipping, and somebody took me up on it. Here, got a Schaefer pen. I got a lot of these for, I think it was five bucks. I got a box of them. 
And so there's not a ton of profit here, or it's it's very slow profit. We're already in the profit on them because I sold one pen and it pays it off, right? So this is like the third or fourth pen I think we've sold. Again, I've got a little spot where they sit. No big deal. $4.98 plus shipping for that. We've got an in stack, in stack, in stacks. That's what it is. It's a little Polaroid from Fuji Film. A little, little mini nine. I paid five dollars for this at a garage sale here just uh, probably two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. I think three weeks ago now, and they sell pretty well. Uh, it would have sold for around thirty bucks plus shipping, but I was impatient. I sent out an offer. And it was accepted for 27 plus shipping. We've got a Dooney and Burke purse. There's the logo right there. Keep an eye out for it. I mean, very often when you find them, it's there's, there's a lot of wear on edges, maybe the clasp or something's missing or whatever. But these vintage Dooney purses do tend to sell okay. They take a while for me, at least the ones that I have found. But I'm happy with it. This one's moving out for $35.19 plus shipping. And then the ring camera. I got this this weekend. I got this along with another ring camera. And then I got also, uh, it's like an outdoor uh, floodlight from ring. And uh, I actually was thinking we might keep one of these, the outdoor one, because we our, ours died. We wanted to get a new one and decided these were a little older than what we wanted. And so we're selling them. And they sell very, very quickly. I've got to get the next one listed today. Uh, but this just is, like I said, the indoor camera. I paid $50 for the pile is what I paid, thinking it was going to be personal use. But we're still going to be able to make some money on it. Uh, this one sold right here for $40.96 plus shipping uh, through eBay's international program. It's actually headed uh, ultimately to Chile. So international sale on the ring cam and you know the next one sells will be in the profit we're gonna make a little bit off of that if you can find these cheap the ring cameras do sell very well all right solid batch going out today nothing high dollar but at least a good number of them so find the silver linings we've got the nerd lux an old mcdonald's toy from 96 i believe space jam uh, just a little plush in there and uh not high dollar a lot of that space jam stuff was pretty overproduced uh and so you see it you think oh wow that's got to be something at space jam michael jordan there's a lot of it out there uh, but some of it does sell 998 plus the shipping for that our uh our snuggle bear she's paid for it uh, the customer came in and did pay took a couple days but it's been paid for, so that is officially sold now. 16 bucks plus is shipping. We've got uh, G.I. Joe back here. The Flak Cannon, uh, the, uh, the toy, is there in the box. Uh, the box has some damage to it, but uh, finding the box at all, pretty rare. I would have got a little bit more for it eventually, but things are slow. I tend to accept more offers, and so this one, 50 bucks plus shipping. We've got a Blu-ray here, Hereditary, apparently a modern horror classic, and uh, picked up a lot of watchers on that thing in a relatively short amount of time, and it sold for $3.99, plus the shipping. L.A. Noir for the PS3, not high dollar at all, $6.99 free shipping, so there's just going to be a couple bucks left after that one. Not as good as Pantera, this one is a nice find, uh, the Pantera DVD, 20 bucks plus shipping for that. Here we go. Uh, we've got An Evening with Christopher Cross. This is apparently a uh, pretty rare DVD, and it's got, believe it or not, some good value. And you'd think maybe Pantera would be worth more than old Christopher Cross, right? But, well, you'd, you'd be wrong. $39 plus shipping for that. That's that's pretty great. And then we've got Joe Rocket Motorcycle Jacket. Uh, this thing, uh, you, you find them, at least I find them now and again, and they take a little while to sell. And so I got an offer on this one that uh, I decided, you know what, we're going to take that. I actually went back and forth a couple of times 
with the buyer. Ultimately, we settled in at $72 free shipping. So a good couple of days of sales. And uh, actually, so far this morning, I think we've got three sales and uh, a couple of those are pretty nice. So, you know, things are, are moving okay on eBay, even though there was actually a glitch this morning. If you were up, uh, at least in my time zone early, uh, West Coast would have been early as well. Uh, things were not showing up, at least through the app on searches. It was telling me uh, there was nothing available in my area looking at my own store. Uh, maybe people were getting out of stock messages. Uh, the, the several message boards had people saying, hey, there's an issue with eBay. It seems like it's cleared up. So that's the good news. Uh, you know, we always get glitches on there. And it seems like there was another one. But uh, probably part of it is uh, glitches seem to happen when they are instituting changes on eBay. Well, there it's the, the seller updates or we, whatever it is. That's when we seem to get the glitches. And uh, I, I guess probably makes sense because of the Inform Act and what eBay is having to do because of that. And uh, so uh, you can read up, uh, you know, you can do the, the, the Google research on the, uh, I believe it's officially the Inform Consumers Act. Uh, I-N-F-O-R-M is an acronym for something. Uh, the, the general idea behind this is a good one, as far as I understand it. So, you know, they, the, uh, the lawmakers want to make sure that consumers are not getting ripped off. I mean, ultimately, that, that's what it is. They want to make sure that there are not bad actors out there that are selling people bad merchandise, and then you have no way, no recourse of finding out actually where that came from, uh, you know, from a, a, a shady company somewhere. And so they came up with the Inform Act. And uh, one of the parts of the Inform Act is that when you buy things online, uh, you are going to have access to uh, a physical address. You're going to be able to find out where you purchased that from. What does that mean for, for us, for resellers? Well, some of the information that I got from eBay. And uh, essentially what's going to happen after June 27th, the Inform Act goes into effect. And at that point, when somebody comes into your store and buys something from you, in the information that eBay sends back to them, your address. Now, a lot of people probably go, eh, whatever, right? You know, 21st century, people can find your address if they want to find it. But, uh, you know, like uh, Mountain Mama said uh, today when I was telling her about this before we came in here and started shooting this, uh, she said, well, why make it easy, right? I mean, there are many reasons people might not want their address out there. We have a P.O. box and it, it, it works better. You know, like I said, people can get your address. It's, it's not that hard if you go, but why make it easy, right? Why just hand it to them? I looked at what my options are and eBay says, you know what? You do have a couple of options. There are ways that uh, you can exempt out essentially. And there are two things. One is if that address that it's showing you, they'll show you what address they're going to send to people. If that address is your residential address, which most of us are working out of our homes, right? And so that address will be your residential address. And there's a link where you can go and request uh, exemption. You click on, hey, that's my residential address. What it will then show them is your state and your country. And that's it. So mine will say Mountain Man Treasure, Montana, United States. And that's fine. I'm fine with that. I mean, that, that information's on what they're getting already, right? On the return address. So easy peasy. Actually, I clicked on it and hit submit. And it seemed like instantly it said, okay, here's what we're going to show them now. So it actually worked. Guys, eBay set something up that instantly worked. I was very happy with that. Uh, the, the other option is if your return address is different from the address that's shown. Click on that and uh, I think it will uh, use your return address instead. You can input an address that you would rather use that, you know, I want them to have my return address, not my physical location. Uh, so I guess I could have done either one of those. But uh, we decided to go ahead and uh, make it easy and just say, hey, that's my house. And eBay said, okay, well, we won't give them your address then. So it, you've got a couple of weeks. If you want to go in there 
and get that changed. Like I said, it works very easily, you know, very simple to go ahead and click that. Check your messages. There's probably going to be a message in there. Uh, you can also access it through the Seller Hub. So I wanted to pass that information on to you guys so that you can get on that and make sure that that's taken care of before that deadline. Thanks for coming and hanging out with me on this one, guys. Uh, let me know down below if you went through and, and you got it changed and if it worked as easy for you as it did for me. I hope it did. So I appreciate it. Once again, we'll see you next time.